All right. Uh, let's determine whether these infinite series converge or diverge. I have this one on the board, but uh, I'm not obviously going to answer this one first. Let's see what we can do. Um, they're both kind of tricky. I don't know. Uh, this one looks like it's alternating, but something to be careful of is arctan, because arctan can be negative. Uh, arctan, arctangent is going to be negative. Uh, remember, this is inverse tangent. This is going to be negative from negative infinity to zero. And it's going to be positive from zero to infinity. In fact, you should absolutely know the graph of arctan. This is probably one of the few inverse trig functions you do need to know the graph of. Arctan looks like this. I'm going to draw this graph for a couple of reasons. Let's say this is n. Let's say this is y, right? Uh, arctan, in terms of its range, its range is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So this is y equals pi over 2. And down here, this is y equals negative pi over 2. So arctan is bounded by those two. And it looks something like this. This is one of the graphs you absolutely do need to know. So this is y equals arctan of n. I mean, essentially, it looks like a tangent graph, but it's sort of rotated, right, and flipped. All right, I can go into all sorts of details there. I'm not going into so. This is arctan, and this is this is helpful to get an idea of what the series uh, looks like. The terms of the series, again, it's negative from zero, a negative infinity to zero, and it's positive from zero to infinity. Also, it's going to help me get a bound, okay? Because this looks messed up, but I see n squared down below, so maybe I can bound the sum and uh, from above. So, um, now I'm going to utilize a theorem which says that if a series converges absolutely, then it converges without the absolute value, right? Absolute convergence is the most powerful. So let's, let's show absolute convergence. So I want to show absolute convergence. I want to show it. I'm not going to say it does that without doing any work. I never see students do that. Come on now, I'm going to justify your work. So I can say the following, right? Uh, the absolute value of negative 1 to the n arctan of n divided by n squared, what is this equal to? Well, the negative 1 disappears, negative 1 to the n, right? So this is n squared is positive for n greater than or equal to 1. So this is really just the absolute value of arctan of n divided by n squared. And you should be thinking, I'm done. This is all the work, pretty much, right? Uh, so this is less than or equal to what? Absolute value of arctan of n is less than what? Well, look at arctan. No matter what value of n I have, we're only really concerned with n being positive. If n is positive, arctan is always less than pi over 2. So this is less than or equal to pi over 2 divided by n squared. All right, so this is equal to pi over 2 times 1 over n squared. Do we know anything about this? Do we know anything about this? In terms of convergence, we absolutely do, because that converges, right? My conclusion follows. I even need to write it. So this converges p series, right? So here's just a little thought. We're done. Because, because pi over 2, doesn't matter if I have the pi over 2 out there, because this converges n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared converges. So write out the logical steps here, but basically what did I just show? This converges absolutely, this converges absolutely, which means the original series converges. That's just an the implication there, okay? Let's go through the other example now, okay? Slightly trickier, I think. It just looks more confusing, if you ask me. All right. Um, this one as well, actually, I actually still want to show absolute convergence. Um, so let's see what we can do. The n pi over 6 looks confusing, but it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to say here is that we have 
we have the following. We have the absolute value of sine of n pi over 6 divided by 1 plus n root n. You just have to think about these sorts of things for a minute. Okay? Think before you start writing stuff down blindly. In terms of the absolute value, what does it pertain to? Only the numerator. The denominator can never be negative as long as n is greater than equal to 1. So this is equal to the absolute value of sine n pi over 6 divided by 1 plus n uh, root n. Now, let's deal with the denominator. If I take away, you should be thinking again, I mean, think, always be thinking P series or geometric, or something you need to convert is. If I take away this one, in other words, if I make the denominator smaller, the whole number gets larger. Take away the one, the denominator gets smaller, okay? The number itself gets larger, which means this is less than or equal to the absolute value of sine n pi over 6 divided by n square root n. But now get rid of sine. Again, it doesn't matter what the argument is. Sine is bounded above by 1. In other words, the range of sine is negative 1 and 1. It doesn't matter what the argument is. This is less than or equal to 1 divided by n square root n. This is equal to 1 over n to the 3 halves. I think you see that we're done. Okay, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves is a converging p series. p is 3 halves, p is 1.5. Thus, this series converges absolutely, therefore, it converges conditionally. Done. You should absolutely write the details out, especially in an exam situation, but these are the important aspects. All right, tell me what you think, comment below.